Hi viewers, this is Dr. Gunamani Jana and you are watching video with me on object oriented analysis and design and mainly you will be focusing on this object diagram today. In the previous diagram, we have seen the class diagram and we represented the various classes at the same time the different relationships among them. If you see the previous two diagrams also here, it was the school is one class, department is another class, student is a class, course is a class, instructor or faculty is a class. So for a school, the name of the class is school. Here the attributes is name, address and phone number. And the data type you have given for name, it is name, for address it is string, for phone it is number. Similarly, while you are going for the operations, add students, remove students, get students, like that all these operations are there. Coming to the department, uh, name of the class is department. The name of the class starts with a capital letter that we remember. Then the attribute name, data type name, then add student, remove student, or whatever things are there, we put it there. Similarly, coming to the student, we have the name, we have the attribute, we have the operations. For the course, we have having the name, the attribute, and also the operations, all the things it is there. Coming to relations, if you see, School is aggregation of department. A school can have at least one or many department. Okay. School is one. Department can be many. So one cardinality here. This side it is one. Here one dot dot star. It can be at least one or many. Similarly, coming to the student, student is a member of the school. A student is a member of the school. So this is also school is a aggregation of the students. So there can be at least one or many school. And in each school, there can be many members many students but while coming to the student and course the students uh, student attends the course so this is the uh, association we are using it here and both here with the cardinality star is many is to many similarly coming to the course and instructor uh, instructor teaches a course instructor teaches a course so there can be at least one instructor or many and he can take many courses it's clear then coming to the department and a course, so we say a course is always associated with the department. This is the association. It is one is to that many is to many. It is there you can see there can be many department and each department can offer many courses or many department can offer many courses. So this is the cardinal department. Coming to the department and the instructor of the faculty, first of all, uh, instructor. Uh, is associated with a department. For department, there will be some faculty or instructor. And a department is aggregation of the instructor. So each department, there will be at least one or many faculty members or instructor. So in this way, we have uh, uh, designed a class diagram and we represented everything. Coming to the second part, uh, here the same thing we have taken. We have taken the uh, company. Uh, company has many departments. Company has offices. Then for each department, persons are there, they are associated. And for a person, the contact information changes, different persons. For person also, personal record also, like the tax ID, other ID, employment history, salary. These things also changes. And we are using an interface, that is I secure information. So these are the things we decide for our uh, class diagram. Then the next important uh, part of our static diagram, that is the object diagram. As we know, uh, this object is just an instance of a class, for example. So, if you see here, C is instance of that company. Let the company, company be Infosys. And uh, D1 is one instance of the department because company can have many departments. D1 one instance of the department. D2 is another instance of the department. And the name of this department is Sales Department. And the name of this department is R&D, Research and Development. Similarly, under this sales department there can be us sales and there can be a manager so p is a person so it can have name something like that this name he can have employee id 4362 or whatever things are there and uh, like that uh, the title it can be vice president of sales or whatever things are there that the designation you put it there similarly uh, then each person can have a contact information is the dependency relation actually it is to be come here then he must have an address and all things there so this is one instance of that company similarly coming to the instance of here my customer 
so this is the one instance this is the object and you see object is represented by underlining something and the camel notations the starting of each word is lower case but any compound word it is starting with the upper case and you can see c colon company c is instance of that company that is also possible c is phone or like that like that we can go for that thing so this is just some brief things i am giving for this object diagram so the stereotype instance also you can see you can use the exception and other things uh, then these things we read afterwards then coming to the various component diagram uh, as i told you that a component is a physical and replaceable part for example here uh, you can see some icons one two three four four icons are there each of the icons in the figure represent uml elements so this is one element this is element this is element this is element four elements are there the component called hello.java if you see it here this is a java program source code for the logical classes right then hello.class when this java is compiled by the java virtual machine or whatever things are there it is converted to class hello.class it comes there similarly we can have some html pages and we can have some jpg some images or everything is there so this is all together we take as small small components you got it now and the entire things the connectivity with the different uh, um, uh, your uh, things we call it as the component diagram okay. relationships you call it the thing then the deployment diagram uh, the deployment diagram the main things here it is the nodes what you are telling the cubes are there and also some relationships among them these are things suppose it is something is connected to the cloud or the internet or some modem is there it is connected then uh, some servers are there the google server or some servers are there this is connected and through a networking it is connected to systems here also this is deployed using this diagram then coming to the activity diagram uh, we can see this is one of the dynamic uh, diagram this is not a static diagram on the initial state start with the solid dot and arrow mark here the different states select a site or commission architect develop plan bit all the things are there uh, this is the condition the accepted not accepted whatever things are there here you can see some concurrent uh, activities takes place so if two or things activities emanating from the same we call it the fork on concurrent fork similarly two or more are uh, merging in one uh, instance concurrent this is called the join so who are joining it is join who are coming out spanning out they are called in the fork okay so these are the things and finally the final state it is divided solid dot and circled with a hollow dot hollow circle uh, and our mark is there so these are the things we can clearly understand is the activity diagram just in brief i am telling you we study in details afterwards similarly coming to the state chart uh, the same thing whatever we have gone here so the state as uh, so starting state or the stop state or the end state and the starts are just it is not neither ellipse nor the rectangles just the corners are tampered like this okay so prepare for a speech then you go for go for the decompress or gesture or synchronize the mouth or stream audio this is maybe some people um, they are trying to anchoring or something they are talking uh, for the audience right so these are the structure diagram you come across and then these are the use case diagram that we will study in details afterwards so we skip for the time being these things now we move to uh, the architecture uh, the need for viewing complex systems from different perspective already we discussed previously like the visualizing specifying constructing and documenting uh, it is a software intensive system it demands that the system be viewed from a number of perspectives okay. so different stakeholders like end users analysts developers system integrators testers technical writers and project managers each bring together different agendas uh, not together each bring different agendas uh, to a project and each looks at that system in different ways at a different times over the project lives now a system architecture is perhaps the most important artifact that can be used to manage these different viewpoints so this is the reason why you are going for the architecture now the architecture it is a set of significant decision about what about the organization of the software system how we organize that software system the selection of the structural elements and their interfaces by which the system is composed the behavior as specified in the collaborations among these diagram things and the composition of the structural and behavioral elements into progressive larger subsystems 
then the architectural style that guides the organization that is the static and dynamic elements and their interfaces their collaborations and their composition this is the reason why we need to go for this architecture then modeling the architecture of a system uh, see the architecture of a software intensive system can best be described as by five interlocking views you see five number of views are interlocking views are there are interlocked each view is a projection into the organizations and the structure of the system focus on the particular uh, aspect of the system so what are the views you see first one is the you see uh, the design view the implementation view the use case view process view deployment view all these are the different type of views are there the vocabulary functionality from that we go for the design view and the system assembly etc all, all the things what we do it here the use cases etc they are representing for the behavior of the things okay so design view it is from the vocabulary functionality then the system assembly and the configurations management is the implementation view similarly the systems topology etc in the deploy the deployment and process view the performance scalability throughput all the things it is taken care by the system architecture here fine then we go for the software development life cycle or sdlc the uml is largely a process independent it is not a process dependent it is process independent irrespective of the process you can meaning that it is not uh, tied to any particular software development life cycle however to get the most benefit from the uml we should consider a process that is use case driven or architecture centric or iterative and incremental so these are things we can go for that one first to go for the use case driven use case driven means that use cases are used as a primary artifact for establishing the desired behavior of the system then we say the use case driven for verifying and validating the system's architecture for testing and for communicating among the stakeholders of the project so when we use this type of things this is called use case driven when we are going for this architecture uh, the architecture centric means that a system's architecture is used as a primary artifact system architecture okay for conceptualizing constructing managing and evolve evolving the systems under development then the iterative process is one that evolves or involves managing a, a stream of executable releases and an iterative process is one that involves the continuous integration of the systems architecture to produce these releases uh, with each new release embodying uh, incremental improvement over the others together an iterative and incremental process is a risk driven meaning that each new releases is focused on attacking and reducing the most significant risk of uh, to the success of the project okay so these are the cases now uh, the use case driven architecture centric and iterative incremental processes can be broken into phases so all these things we have done into phases so what is a phase then a phase is the span of time between two major milestones of the process when a well defined set of objectives are met artifacts are completed and decisions are made whether to move into the next phase so this is a phase we call it okay so in the next next figure it shows there are four phases in the software development life cycle first one is the inception second one is the elaboration construction and transition in this diagram workflow are plotted against these phases showing their varying degrees to focus over time so let us have a diagram like this if you see so this divided in four phases like inception elaboration construction and transition four phases we divided so the process workflow you see i give an example requirement analysis initially we because for any project first the, the important thing is that the collection of the requirements and analyzing that one requirement analysis mostly done here right uh, but uh, the unified process uh, previously in the waterfall model you completely collect all the requirement here uh, if the model fails then the entire time is wasted but here you see it is spanning up to this also requirement analysis in analysis and design here it is mainly focusing on this elaboration and some part of this construction stage implementation you see after elaboration up to construction mainly it is spanning but if it is the test testing just after the inspection uh, in, uh, that is the inception uh, the testing is a, a throughout the process it is not that one time you test and forget it not like that so go on testing go on testing like that mainly it is focused construction to transition stage the deployment because everything is completed then you go for the deployment 
then this was the processing the process workflow this is the supporting workflow configuration and change of management it is done here project management is done here environment etc it is set initially so this is the preliminary iteration iteration one two three like that all the things we go on telling like this now coming to the various phases what i told the first the inception phase inception is the first phase of the process when the seed idea for the development is brought to the point of being at least internally sufficiently well founded to warrant entering into the elaboration phase so this is the case of inception phase coming to the elaboration phase elaboration is the second phase of the process when the product vision and the architectures are defined in this phase the systems requirements are articulated prioritized and also baseline and a systems requirement may range from general vision statements to precise evaluation criteria is specifying particular functional or non functional behavior and is providing a basis of the testing then coming to the construction phase construction in the third phase of this process when the software is brought from an executable architectural baseline to being ready to the transition so it is you can understand from execution to transition to the user community it is transferred to them here also the systems requirement are specially its evaluation criteria are constantly re-examined against the business needs of the project and resources are allocated as appropriate to actively attack the risk to the project. Now, the next one is the transition. Uh, this is the fourth phase of this process when the software is turned into hands of the user community. Rarely does the software development process ends here. Uh, for even during this phase, the system is continuously improved, bugs are eradicated, and features that did not make the earlier release are added. And one element uh, that distinguishes these processes and uh, that cuts across all four phases is an iteration. So, one iteration is completed. So, an iteration is a distinct set of activities with a baseline plan and evaluation or a criteria that result in a release either internal or external. This means that the software development life cycle can be characterized as involving a continuous stream of executable releases of the system's architectures. It is this emphasis on architecture as an important artifact that drives the UML to focus on modeling the different view of the system's architecture. This is all about then some things we talk about the forward and reverse engineering. See, uh, you see the example what is forward engineering what is reverse engineering see forward engineering the process of transforming a model into uh, code that means you are drawing some diagram from that code is generated this is called forward engineering you can replace like this forward engineering results in the loss of information because models written the email and semantically richer than any current object oriented programming languages. So, some uh, information loss. In fact, this is major reason why uh, we need models in addition to code, structural features such as collaborations and behavioral features such as interactions. All can visualize clearly the UML, but not so clearly from the raw code. To forward engineering, a class diagram identify the rules for mapping to our. Uh, implementation languages or languages of the choice. Similarly, this is sometimes we can do for our project or our organization as a whole. Depending on the semantic of the languages we choose, we may have to constant the use of this UML features, the UML permits you to model, all the things I think you can. So, then go for this forward engineering, you can have an idea about that. So, this is the diagram I drawn. You can see it is a class diagram. So, event handler, current event ID, source, all things are there. So, this is the generalization of the graphical user event handler. And here, the dependency, if the client changes, then event handler changes, something like that. So, this is the uh, diagrams. From the diagram, you are able to generate the code here. Can you see it here? This is called forward engineering. The reverse is called the reverse engineering. That means, uh, from the code, we will be able to uh, generate a model. Okay? So, this is all about to uh, our different uh, models and uh, architecture. So, I hope you have uh, understood the basic concepts um, of these things. In our next video, 
we'll go for some implementations and some other things in our uh, uh, most probably we'll move to the module 2 thank you for watching this video if you like this video please do share with your friends and also don't forget to subscribe the channel thank you once again take care of health goodbye